of great larrikins and characters over the years, and the stories get bigger and better with the telling. James Norman Dobbin didn't kick the winning goal in a grand final or win a Brownlow medal. His claim to fame is somewhat different, as Ron Barassi discovered. He was the phantom of the MCG. Jimmy Dobbin, the bush trucky from Marupna, who talked his way into every grand final since 1966 without a ticket. Jimmy Dobbin, I think he's part of a scene that is, um, well, I think it's a big cultural change. I think Henry Lawson and uh, Banjo Patterson regard him as a larrikin. That's the type of guy he was. Uh, family and friends first, never doubted any of his mates, but uh, given the opportunity to up upset the establishment, he'd do it. And from there, it just blossomed. Every year from then on, he got into the grand final, didn't pay, and then he got into the members, he got into the long room, just by his wits. Of course, Hawthorne of Premiers for 1983. Jimmy Dobbin didn't stop at getting into the MCG. He watched the match from the exclusive members reserve and then celebrated with the winning team out on the ground. Former VFL umpire Glenn James came from the same town. I'd uh, seen him quite often in the members area at the MCG, of which I'm a member, and I knew uh, darn well that Jimmy wasn't a member. <laughs> to get in there, you nearly had to have uh, to be a king or a premier of Victoria or whatever. And uh, there was an argument started, and uh, the uh, fellow on the gate apparently was looking for help, and uh, in a flash, Jim said, Senior cunts, senior detective uh, so-and-so from Caulfield Police Station, can I help you? The bloke said, look, I'm having a bit of trouble with these two fellas, and James escorted him out and came back, and the bell said, thanks very much, and opened the gate, and he's in. In 1982, in fact, I, he was, uh, when I umpired the grand final, he uh, ran past me when I was walking off, um, he was going over to congratulate the um, Carlton Football Club and uh, in 1990 he was on the ground, had a photo taken with um, Alan McAllister. So he featured quite prominently on grand final day without uh, any official authority to do so. <laughs> for country people now, it's nearly impossible to get tickets for a grand final because you have to buy a series. You have to be a member and even Melbourne club members can't get them. For a bloke like me, it's a, you can, there's no hope of seeing a grand final unless you do what Jimmy Dobbin did. And he uh, said, well, they shouldn't be allowed to do that to us, so he decided he'd go every time he could. While well, we're getting ground out here. That's just the type of guy he was. It was just a challenge, someone to beat uh, the establishment. The Phantom, in recent years, had partners in crime who brought cameras to record his exploits with prime ministers and presidents. But if there is any doubt, Jimmy has immortality in our Channel 7 coverage. A real opportunity. He's the icing on the cake, isn't he? Oh, he just cannot contain him. One of the Phantom's apprentices sums up the secret of his success. Never look behind you. Always keep your money in your pocket. Wear your best clothes. Just keep walking. And 1990, after having seen his beloved bombers go down to the pies, he had the last laugh at Collingwood's expense. For years and years, I've always wondered who he was. We've watched that tape at home, and there that guy is trying to pull it off Peter Dacos. And uh, I thought he must have been an official of the AFL, and then he couldn't have been that. And I wondered if he was uh, the Army we were doing the AFL grand final at the time. I thought he must have been in charge of the Army, and it wasn't that. And then I thought, did he work for Collingwood? We didn't have a clue who he was. 1995 was Jimmy's 30th and last grand final and it was the only time he looked like getting caught. He was going into the members and um, Glenn James, ex Shepherd and Lad, um, AFL umpire, he, um, yeah, what are you doing coming over here? What are you doing? He had his back to me and I grabbed him by the collar of the shirt and I said, listen, mate, where are you going? And he turned around and he, he decorated me with a few superlatives. <laughs> but he was on his way to the members that day. <laughs> He may have been invisible at the MCG, but he was the complete opposite in his hometown of Marupna, where he had been a character ever since childhood. Oh, yes, well, at school, he introduced the school motto. Uh, they had to uh, win the last event to win the athletic shield, and, of course, they cheated to win it. And so he said to me, he said, well, 
We've got their school motto, sir. I've copied it off that cafe school in England. Cafe school? Yeah, Eaton. See? <laughs> and it, it said, the school motto will be, sir, when we look like losing, cheat. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. We've upheld that. He run Chook Raffles and uh, he, look, he'd done everything for American Football Club. He was that wrapped up in it. He was, uh, he was a very keen Essendon supporter and I think he uh, loved Marutner a lot more than he did Essendon. And he had some unusual methods of raising money. Come on, you blokes! We're here to play to Give him a bit of room! Move around! He ran uh, annual two-up games uh, near Marutner for the Royal Children's Hospital. And he was a brilliant ringmaster. Like, he had wit. He, he'd talk all the time. But everything was funny, and he'd keep the attention of everybody you know, right through for hours on end. In February this year, Jimmy Dobbin died at the wheel of a truck, a job he did for most of his life. We'll never, ever, ever see a Jimmy Dobbin again. No one like him. No one could ever, ever do the things that uh, Jimmy done and, and, and uh, get away with. People might try, they might try and copy him, but no one could do it as simply and as easily and uh, without standing on too many people's toes. But his partners in crime say they have to carry on the tradition. Yeah, we'll be there. Spirit carried on, as I mentioned, the Phantom. Phantom lives forever, mate. The priest said, well, well, by now he's no doubt talked his way through the pearly gates into heaven and had his photo taken with the Lord. And I thought that summed him up very well. Fantastic story, and our thanks to Ron Barassi and Marco Bass for it. And if you were thinking of doing a Dobbin, the gatekeepers at the MCG will even be asking Ron Barassi for his ticket from now on.